going home from the club with a guy and then he takes off his skin suit and he's a yeti and you figure out how to make that work hi everyone i don't know why it feels like it's been such a long time i'm going to talk about what i read in october and i don't want to talk too much about it but thank you for the messages um i was not in korea at the time of the tragedy that happened in itaewon and um my heart goes out to everyone affected by it um but i just wanted to say thank you i was safe i had people who were there but we were um everybody was okay thankfully so um yeah i'll maybe say more down below but anyway just yeah thank you for reaching out if i didn't respond um i probably read your message i've just had a lot of anxiety related to social media right now so i haven't really been on or if i have been i haven't been active thank you for being here because i feel like this like filming this video today even though i felt really anxious about like how i was going to start this video talking about books kind of separating myself from reality a bit um is so helpful it's part of the reason why i started this channel um i started my channel in 2020 and that kind of like escape portal um has been the most valuable thing in my life for the past three years so just thank you um as always for allowing me to have this space and for being in this space with me and um i know by the end of this i will be laughing and and feeling upbeat and and everything um especially because the last books that i read were so silly um so just yeah thank you for letting me sit down and have fun talking about books um it means more than you know so regarding the books um i thought i actually wasn't gonna read a lot this month because if you guys follow my main channel um you guys might know that i was in the u.s for all of october um i was visiting family on the west coast or friends on the west coast family on the east coast and i had a wonderful time and i didn't expect to be reading that much because i was gonna be busy but it turns out i actually read quite a lot um maybe because i was on a bunch of airplanes this is probably the most diverse in terms of genre that i've read in a while um, so I'm excited to tell you about them, but first I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Thread Up, and I can't tell you how excited I am to work with them because I've wanted to work with them forever, uh, but living in Korea, they unfortunately don't ship internationally, but because I was in the States, we were able to work together, and I love them. So if you don't know, Thread Up is an online consignment and thrift store um, that has a wide variety. Like you can get things for like a dollar or you can get these designer items. I used to buy myself a Christmas bundle. Like I would send it home to the States. And so when I went home for Christmas, I would have a gift for myself waiting for me. That's how much I love Thread Up. This is from Thread Up. This is from Madewell. You can search. Something I love about Thread Up is that you can search by item. Like if you're looking for a pea coat if you're looking for a Christmas scarf um, but you can also search by brands so you can search like Reformation made well they have like gap but again they also have designers so I got this really beautiful shirt from theory which was the estimated retail value of like 270 bucks and I got it for much less this really cute sweater is from kimchi blue which is an urban outfitters brand and it was estimated at like $64 and I got it for a third of the price they had J. Crew pants that are usually like in the 90s and I got it for 23. They have Ralph by Ralph Lauren. I got this cute Talbots shirt that is in the color that I have been searching for for so long. And they also have some things that still have tags on them. This is from Tilly's <laughs> and it still had tags. You can also save your sizes. So when I am browsing, even though it's like very overwhelming that there's thousands and thousands of items on this site, um, I can separate it so that it only shows me my sizes. So you can thrift my picks. There will be a link down below to see some of the things that I have checked out. Um, and then you can use my code carry to get an extra 30% off of your first order plus free shipping. That expires on January 1st and it's only for the US and Canada. So keep that in mind. Thread up. Thank you so much for finally working with me. I'm so glad that we finally were in a space and time where it worked for us. And I love you guys. I have been thrifting with thread up four years. Thank you, Thread Up. Let's dive into the video. The first book that I read in October is actually a DNF. I did not finish, but I still want to talk about it because it might be a hit for you. I don't know. It is Hearts We Sold by, I believe the author is Emily Lloyd-Jones. That author had written a book called The Bone Houses, which I 
adored. I've talked about it in multiple videos. It is a standalone. It's about like zombie hunting in like a kind of unknown time period, definitely not modern day. And they are coming out with a new book called The Drowned Trees. And so when I went to my library to request The Drowned Trees, I saw that they had written another book called The Hearts We Sold. Right? And it was available, so I checked it out immediately thinking I like their writing. And it was just very different from the Bone Houses. It takes place in modern day, but the main difference is that demons are around. Like, they're just, they just showed up one day and they're like, hey, we're demons. If you need anything, we'll make a trade kind of thing. So, like, you can give them body parts and they will give you whatever you wish for. You know, like if you want beauty, if you want fame, if you want XYZ, they'll give you their price point, which is like, it'll cost you your nose or something and they'll just take your nose. Like it, it's very strange. So anyway, Hearts We Sold, basically our main girl loses her scholarship and has no way. She's in like a very toxic um, family situation. And um, so she, makes a deal with the devil basically and sells her soul. She sells her heart, not her soul. The hearts we sold, it's in the title, Carrie. Ugh. Loans it. The demon owns it for two years. And part of the deal is she also joins this crew of three other kids who like fight these weird portals that keep opening up and like something evil is gonna come out. So they like work together to close them but they're like working for the de it's very strange i could see potential for it like i think maybe a slightly younger audience would be more into it but for me um it just didn't kind of grab my attention and the beginning of october was chaos for me so i just was not in the right mind space to even try to finish it yeah i'm hoping the drowned trees just came into the library today um so i'm hoping that that is a little bit more um, akin to the bone houses, which I think it is. So I am not giving up on this author. Absolutely not. I loved the bone houses. So you will hear more, um, but the hearts we sold just didn't do it for me. However, the next book did. The next book I read was Dowry of Blood, and I've heard so much about it from so many people that I trust. I don't know if this is the UK cover, but like, whoa, beautiful. What is it about? It is sort of the diary. I forget if it's in diary form or like letter form. It is the written word of Dracula's first wife or so she thinks. She like tells this story of her experience with Dracula from when she is changed by him until much, 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 much further. Like thousands of years in the future. It is a polyamorous relationship, which I thought was just like portrayed really naturally. It is definitely dark though. Spoiler, Dracula isn't like a great guy. Um, so there is a lot of abuse. It kind of begins as emotional and kind of psychological abuse, but it becomes more physical. I just thought it was really interesting. I got to kind of the end where I was sort of like, okay, let's, wrap this up but overall i just thought that it was for what it was really great um and yeah i highly recommend just like as a warning at the core of the story this is just about an abusive relationship really so um proceed with caution but i thought that it was done so well and and i really enjoyed it it was definitely like a very kind of autumnal creepy feeling to it so a dowry of blood after that i read some really strange books i saw the cover for this book called league of gentlewoman witches and i was like gotta read it but it's in a series so before i could read gentlewoman witches i had to read the wisteria society of lady scoundrels and what a trip so i read both books they are so strange so i thought how do I explain these books? It was kind of sold to me as like, not Bridgerton-esque, but like Regency era England, but there are pirates and witches and the women are the pirates and the witches. And I was like, down, sounds like something I'd be super into. Mm, the pirates don't have ships. They fly their houses. And like, it was just absurd. Like, it was truly absurd. Was it fun though? Yes. I thought that the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels was huh 
hilarious like literally just absurd is the only way that i can talk about it like i think like the main character was her name charlotte in the first one or anyway our main girl is like normal i would say but everyone around are like cartoon characters they are so loony and like almost borderline like if you've read gideon the ninth and just how ridiculous the things that gideon her their reactions and like whatever it was very similar to that like the way that these these were just like not real people they were so funny and absurd and strange but what essentially happens in the wisteria society of lady scoundrels is that um all of the pirate women fight amongst each other they like to kill each other like it's just really strange but they're like ladies about it right but they have like hired assassins and stuff anyway follow our main girl who is staying with her aunt i believe um who is a pirate and a guy comes and knocks on the door and it's just like hello i have been hired to kill you and our story goes on from there i can't i can't explain it it was a good time but it was like because the characters were so ridiculous it was funny but it also i was so confused about the plot so i like held on really tightly to the romance plot line to it which i thought was cute but everything else that was happening right over my head i have no idea what happened in that book and that continued into the League of Gentlewoman Witches, which takes place pretty much right after the Wisteria Society, but it follows, instead of the Pirate Brigade, um, it follows the witches. What was it? Like, the pirates like to do things just for the hell of it. Like, they like to fight each other and use magic, but, like, they don't use it for others versus witches, like, use their powers. Whatever. They, they like, they're both technically witches, but like the pirates just like to fight amongst themselves and the witches like to like use their magic, you know? I, again, did I understand the books? No. So we're following another girl who is a witch who gets wrapped up in something or other with a kind of pirate man. I was much more lost with gentlewoman witches, much more lost. However, near the end, we kind of see a combination where all of the characters from the two books come together, and I did really like that. Like there was a certain line of female friendship, but the f the two main characters are batshit. One is a pirate, one is a witch, completely insane. And so I like loved that, but again, what happened? I don't know. I have no idea. So I'm sorry that I can't explain this well, but like if you are willing <laughs> to try, um, I had a fun time. I think that the League of Gentlewoman Witches was just like a little too ridiculous at points where I got completely lost. Wisteria Society was definitely easier to follow. I don't know. It was an interesting read. That is for sure. I underlined so many lines because they were just so funny. Um, but yeah that's that so thank you to everyone who shared those because i was on a trip <laughs> after that i read jackal which i haven't read like a true thriller in a really long time and that is exactly what jackal is it is about a woman who is returning to her teeny tiny hometown she's kind of sworn to never go back like something bad happened there um, but she's going back for her best friend's wedding. Things unfold from there, and it actually follows, we're kind of first introduced to the story. That's like the main present day storyline, but throughout the book we are shown different instances of young black girls being disappeared. Mm? So when I was trying to think of how I was going to explain this book, I think the best way is if you combined get out with the outsider by stephen king put those together and that's exactly the vibes that i felt from this book it takes place in this very secluded very white community that's kind of obsessed with its whiteness and its safety and all of this stuff and then we have these black families that move in and their daughters go missing and then there's this kind of underlying feeling that maybe something supernatural is going on it felt very like yeah the outsider from stephen king is like what i'm thinking of very creepy very eerie a great thriller so that was jackal 
After that, I think I talked about this in my last video, but I read Bliss Montage, which is a collection of short stories by Ling Ma. I loved Severance, so I was very excited to pick this up. I don't know what genre I would put these in. They're definitely literary fiction, but some of them have like magical elements to them, not like fantasy, but more veering towards magical realism. They are loosely connected. They take place in a few various places, but mainly I think New York City and LA, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh Chicago. Anyway, um, I just thought they were so interesting. I underlined so many lines. I think I, I mentioned this before, but I think I want to get the physical copy. I want to get it once it's in paperback. Um, I could only find it in hardcover. Yeah, I want to get a physical copy just so I can underline the hell out of it. Highly recommend if you liked Severance. Um, if you haven't read Severance yet, you should read Severance. Beware, it is about a pandemic. But yeah, I just, anything that Ling Ma touches, I will read. So that is Bliss Montage. Um, there is one short story called Yeti Lovemaking, and it is about that, going home from the club with a guy, and then he takes off his skin suit and he's a Yeti, and you figure out how to make that work. So I was reading that on the airplane. I was sitting next to a very lovely couple, um, and the, the woman in the middle seat was also a reader. Um, so hopefully she understands. If she had looked over my shoulder, I mean, she didn't even have to look over my shoulder. I read on a giant iPad, but the second I switched to that page and it just in big letters said Yeti love making, I was like, ah, not here. Be careful who you're sitting next to, who might be reading over your shoulder because Anyway, next up I read Belladonna, which I made an entire video about, but in case you don't want to watch that whole thing, it is a fantasy romance. It has a lot to do with death because death is a character and basically Belladonna can't die. Her mom was throwing a party when Belladonna was like two months old and somebody poisoned the wine and everybody died except Belladonna didn't, even though she technically was exposed to the poison as well. And death saw this and was like, oh my God, that's amazing and left her alone. She grows up with a bunch of different family members is kind of passed from house to house and they each die in like a strange accident. So they think that she's cursed, all this stuff. Eventually she goes to live with her cousin by marriage. It turns into a little murder mystery, which I appreciated. I liked that part of the story, even though I felt like it went really slowly. She could have figured this out way faster, but I did like that element of it. I thought that the romance elements were weird as hell. So I just talked for three minutes about something that's like a huge spoiler. <laughs> if you want to know more about it, I have an entire video dedicated to it and I pinned a spoilery comment if you would like to see some of my thoughts. Overall, I felt meh about it, but it had this kind of open-ended ending, which is going to continue. This is going to be a series. And I feel like I will be interested in the next book. So I, like I said in that, pre in my other video, I felt like this was more of a prequel than a first book in a series, if that makes sense. So I am interested. I will be continuing the series. You will hear about Foxglove in the future, which is the name of the next book. Yeah, for more info, watch my other video. After that, I entered my thriller phase. Jackal kind of reminded me how much I love thrillers. So I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway, which is kind of like a not funny Knives Out slash The Inheritance Games, where we have a girl who is really struggling to make ends meet. She's a fortune teller on a pier, not in Brighton, but like a Brighton-esque British town on the coast. And she gets a letter telling her that her grandma died, even though her grandma's been dead for a very long time, so she thought, and that she needs to be there for the reading of the will. She figures that this is a really big mistake, so she almost doesn't go, but she's having money problems, and she's kind of like, I could fake it you know? So she ends up going um, and has to live with the family during the whole reading of the will and all this stuff and things turn ugly really fast. And yeah, I didn't like how it ended to be honest. I didn't think that the ending was very good at all, but I appreciated the journey that we were on. I thought that the ambiance was really cool. It was kind of coastal England going into this like really bitter winter in this creepy ass giant house. So um, if you're looking for something like that, um, again, I didn't like how it ended, but I thought that the journey was cool. The death of Mrs. Westaway. 
After that, I read Such a Quiet Place, which is another thriller, which takes place in this tiny kind of exclusive neighborhood that's, you know, a very small college town. Pretty much everyone who lives there, it's like a cul-de-sac or like a circle. Everyone who lives there probably works at the college. And our story starts when one of the neighbors comes back after being on trial for the murder of another neighbor. Two neighbors, in fact. They were found not guilty, and so instead of like coming out of jail and finding another place to live, they come back to the neighborhood. And all the neighbors are like, what the hell? Because she seems pretty guilty. So they're just like, the vibes are off, like why did you come back kind of thing. Um, and so we kind of follow her coming back. She is hellbent on figuring out who actually did it because she claims that she's innocent, but everybody else is trying to like harden up that story and prove that she was guilty. And as a reader, you really can't be sure. Everybody seems kind of shady in like, the way that everyone is gossipy and petty and shady. A lot of it also takes place around the like Facebook group of the neighborhood. Overall, like I didn't think it was a groundbreaking thriller, but it definitely held my attention and did what I wanted it to do. Yeah, so if you're just looking for something quick like that, I thought that I appreciated like quite a few of its twists and turns. So that is such a quiet place. The next book I read was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I have seen this book for years. I adore the cover. I thought that it would be absolutely up my alley and I don't know why I hadn't read it earlier, um, but I finally picked it up and I actually really appreciated the introduction or the kind of dedication page. I think it was, yeah, it was actually like a very substantial, I think it was more of like an introduction from the author because I've kind of mentioned this with Riley Sager, um, but men who write horror stories that center around women, I tend to feel strange, especially Riley Sager because all of his women go through the same thing and it feels a little like he's got a fantasy um, and it just makes me feel really not awesome. So to have, I believe the author's name is like Glady, he wrote this introduction um, that basically explains why he chose the protagonist that he did and he dedicated it to his mom. He was like, I grew up thinking that my mom and all of her little housewife friends were very frivolous and silly and you know, they had their book clubs and their baking nights and all this stuff and I just thought it was kind of dumb. And then growing up as he became an adult, he realized how much how strong his like those women are and how they have really complex and sometimes secretive lives and kind of shielded him from a lot of the horrors of the world growing up and so they're kind of like these superhumans and so he wrote about this southern housewives book club and it was so good um it was definitely really dark i will say that like absolutely there is sexual assault um there is child abuse there there's just very like detailed descriptions of various kinds of assault um so this is definitely like adult horror so um please be aware of that if you are going to start this book but it basically starts with our main mom finally getting into the book club that she wanted to get into. She lives in this tiny, tiny town where all of these people have lived for since forever, right? Every family knows each other. Um, and she finally gets into this book club, realizes she hates it, and the other girls break off and kind of decide to read what they want to read. So instead of reading these like very dry, boring books, they get obsessed with true crime. I think it takes place over maybe even more than a decade um, of their lives together, but these women just become fast friends, have their monthly true crime book club, um, and just raise their kids and go through life and, and deal with all this stuff, which would have just continued and they would have lived a very normal life had a stranger not moved in next door. This stranger is odd and kind of gives off every red flag that they've been reading about in all of their true crime books. I don't want to go any more deeper into it, but I just thought it was 
so well done um, I loved just like even the really mundane details of like southern hospitality these moms are always like oh a neighbor I've got to go bring over a casserole or a pie and they like talk about all the different pie like there were just so many of these details that were so comforting to read and then there was all this horror it was just such a strange mixture but it worked so well and I really appreciate it and I I just I think I appreciate it much more because of that introduction like knowing that it came from a place of realizing that your mom that you wrote off as silly is like can like go out and slay vampires you know i just love that so that was the southern book club's guide to slaying vampires and i definitely do want to read more of their work i um they they wrote my best friend's exorcism and one other um but anyway i'm very excited to um continue reading their work because i really enjoyed the southern book club and god that cover so good. And the last one before I take a quick break to eat lunch because my lunch just arrived. Um, I finally read If Cats Disappeared from the World. It is a relatively short story and it is about a man who just found out that he has terminal cancer. I believe he has a brain tumor. He's given a few months but then when he gets home the devil is waiting for him and is like hey actually it's gonna happen tomorrow so let's make a deal. And essentially the devil is like I can give you one more day of life if you get rid of something from the entire world. So like getting rid of chocolate. The next day you'll be alive, but there won't be any chocolate in the world. Or getting rid of, you know, birds, whatever. And of course our main character agrees um, and he uses that time to kind of wrap up some things. He never got to really fall in love so he goes back and he meets his old ex-girlfriend and figures out like why didn't that work and all this stuff so i thought the first quarter was really good really funny um i thought it was very obviously dark humor but i thought that it was really engaging and, and quite insightful and and clever um and then it just sort of got kind of repetitive like i knew what was going to happen you know so i do think it was worth the read but i don't i expected something like a little bit bigger a little bit more profound but overall it was fine um there is a talking cat in it there is the devil likes to wear hawaiian shirts i mean there's like fun details to it but i think um the first quarter maybe even the first half of the book is what is very strong i thought that the ending the way that it literally the last page tied up um i thought was very touching and heartwarming but um, I feel kind of middle of the road about it I thought it was gonna be a little bit more life-changing I think I just had higher expectations based on what I've heard from other people um, but I would recommend if you're looking for a short book that is depressing but also heartwarming but also funny <laughs> um, it, I think it's like a hundred something pages so that is if cats disappeared from the world and I will come back to giggle with you over the romances that I read on my airplane after I have eaten. Okay? Bye. <laughs> okay, I have been fed. The last three books that I read are romances. I had a flight home uh, from the States that was about a little over 15 hours, um, and I have found that romances, as long as they're good, um, are so good for a flight. Romances and thrillers really get me through because I can just like punch them out and I get really drawn in and I kind of forget everything and it's like watching a movie but it takes a significantly longer amount of time. So the first <laughs> the first book that I read is It Happened One Summer and when I told my friend Susan that I was going to read this she started cracking up because she knows that I don't like smut and or dirty talk and she was like, buckle your seatbelts for this book. And she was right, but I'll get into it. It wasn't as bad as I feared. So It Happened One Summer is a romance. Um, it is about a Los Angeles socialite. Um, she has a really rich stepdad and so she just has never had to work in her life is like a billionaire has been like raised in beverly hills and she's like famous for being famous like she's famous for going to parties and like pulling these weird publicity stunts and blah 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 when we meet her she has just been 
publicly broken up with and she decides and she decides in order to like stay relevant and like keep that story kind of out of the news and show that she's not a broken woman um she's gonna throw a crazy party that involves trespassing and public nudity and <laughs> that is basically like the final straw her stepdad is like you have got to get your head on straight and so I'm gonna send you to the city you were born in. She and her sister um, are from her mother's first marriage, um, which was to this fisherman who lived in this small town outside of Seattle up in Washington. He died in a fishing accident and after that her mom just was distraught, couldn't live in the town anymore, came down to LA, ended up meeting her stepdad and the rest is history, right? That's how they live in Beverly Hills. But her father actually owned a bar in that town and he still technically owns it. So the stepdad is like, listen, I'm sending you up to live in this tiny town. You're gonna live in the weird apartment above the bar and you have to stay there for three months. And like, I'm gonna give you enough money to get started, but then you have to figure out, you're 28 years old, you're gonna figure out how to live, how to make a living, right? Their entire plan is that they're gonna do something that proves that they've like learned their lesson and they can come back early. They don't wanna spend the whole three months, but it's a quaint little small town and they weirdly start to feel at home there. I thought that the characters were really sweet. I thought that it felt legitimate. I thought that all of the little details of the town were so quaint and lovely. We of course meet a very brooding fisherman he reminded me of like if you've watched ted lasso like i just kind of pictured him as roy kent but like a fisherman <laughs> i'm roy kent and i get paid to play a game but i'm mad all the time <sighs> <laughs> that's actually pretty good um so i was like sold. I was I already knew I was going to enjoy this character. Even though there was a lot of smut, I felt like the actual writing of the smut parts were stuff that was like I could handle reading. It was fine. I thought it was actually kind of funny because a lot of it is like Piper in her head reacting to things and I just thought it was like actually a funny way of writing smut and I I appreciated that. But uh, our main male character uses okay for just like at its core the dirty talk is horrific so bad just him like if literally if he just didn't speak it would have been the perfect book <laughs> maybe not perfect but like a great book the second he opens his mouth he is like think of roy kent like this stoic kind of angry bristly man and then like he just becomes this pathetic embarrassing guy he also uses the term of endearment baby which i hate i've talked about this before if you use and or like being called baby good for you for me literally makes me sick and he used it as like punctuation like at the end of every sentence he would say baby and I wanted to die I just had to kind of if I saw that there was a quotation mark that he was about to speak during a smutty scene I just had to kind of be like Ugh, like please no but overall everything else was quite funny I, I didn't think it was like groundbreaking it was definitely like it had the pacing and it had the kind of plot points that I knew exactly what was going to happen, but I kind of liked that. I could so easily see it being adapted on screen. Um, it felt like such a rom-com. Um, I mean, that's what it was, but like it felt like a rom-com that you would wa you would like watch on like a Saturday night or something like that. So um, I'm definitely going to read the second one because there is actually a sequel that follows the other sister. Um, so I'm excited for that. I also appreciated this was like such weird luck. The main fisherman guy is explaining how boats work and like how you shouldn't be scared because boats can float you know um but he mentioned turbulence and it was during turbulence on my flight and he was like that's why you know it's like a plane they bump around but like they aren't gonna fall or whatever and i was just like thank you thank you for reminding me that i'm on a safe aircraft so he like won a point this fictional man won a point in my book 
simply for that, for calming my fears. So um, that was it happened one summer. It was corny, it was cheesy, but um, it was exactly what I wanted as long as he, Brendan was his name. If there was a feature, if there was a way that I could just like black out his dialogue during the sex scenes, it would have been oh, great. I would have paid so much money for that. Just not my cup of tea, but everything else, totally fine. It happened one summer. And then I read, so I don't think that I actually mentioned this, I don't know what month I did read it in, but I read Below Zero, which is a Allie Hazelwood novella. So if you don't know, Allie Hazelwood wrote The Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain, but she also has these novellas which are more like a hundred something pages. I mean they're really quick, but they essentially do the same thing that all of her books do. And I don't know why people, I think people thought that I said I hated Love on the Brain, but if you listen to what I said, I said that I enjoyed it. I just thought it was a carbon copy of the love hypothesis. That's okay. <laughs> like I enjoyed the love hypothesis. So I don't know why, but like if anybody thinks that I'm an Allie Hazelwood hater, I don't know where you got that, but I'm not. I just thought that, you know, Authors have a style, but I feel like their style is like the same book, <laughs> at least for Love on the Brain and The Love Hypothesis. And so these novellas are like that, but just cut down to 100 pages. So I did read Below Zero. I think it might have been in September when I just kind of needed, like I knew I needed to turn my brain off. So I read Below Zero. It's about this scientist who works on something that involves her having to go to the North Pole. I forget, okay? But it's basically like a misunderstanding quote-unquote enemies to lovers thing. I thought that it was actually pretty cute. If I remember correctly, like I knew what it was gonna deliver me. It was an Allie Hazelwood and I thought that it did the damn thing. So I decided on my plane home, I read Under One Roof and then I read Stuck With You. The, the order is technically Under One Roof, Stuck With You, and then Below Zero. Um, I don't remember if Below Zero had spoilers because I didn't, I wouldn't have recognized them. There's a big spoiler for Under One Roof in Stuck With You, so um, just as a warning. But anyway, so Under One Roof is about a girl who's moving to Washington DC to work for the EPA. Her PhD advisor, mentor, second mother has passed away and in the will left her her house in DC, which is wild, especially as like, fresh out of her doctorate program, working for the government, not making a whole lot of money, trying to live in Washington DC. It's a sweet deal. So she goes to move in when she realizes she actually only owns half of the house because this other guy lives in the house and he has ownership. So this guy is related to her PhD um, advisor, but the family seems very like estranged and stuff so she automatically doesn't trust him and he's a lawyer that like works for lobbyists like the oil companies and stuff like that so like enemy number one right so of course we follow that whole thing of having to live together with your enemy he wants to buy her out and like buy her half of the house but she's like i can't i can't afford to move anywhere blah, 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 blah. i thought that the actual story was cute until we get to kind of the conclusion um and it was really weird i'm i'll put a spoiler comment down maybe but like the romance was weird as hell like throughout the throughout the book you know that these two are like the most socially awkward people i have ever read. I feel like a lot of their bonding cute moments happen off of the page, so we're just left with kind of reading this like really strange relationship. There's a lot of ellipses, there's a lot of unfinished sentences. I don't think Liam speaks a complete sentence in the entire book. He's more like, what about, I thought you, what? like he speaks like that. But overall it had me laughing, I thought it was funny. Well let me, let me tell, let me tell you about the next book and then we'll go back and we'll just do like a master reading of um all of the big men words that she uses the next one is stuck on you which i thought was her weakest one um and it was honestly pretty weird like this seemed like a kind of toxic relationship but it's about a girl who has this like meet cute with this other engineer at a cafe 
um, they have breakfast and it they just really hit it off so they end up getting dinner later that day um, and then they have kind of this one night stand which they didn't expect it to be a one night stand this felt like it was gonna be something but then he betrays her somehow and we learn about that throughout the book it kind of switches between past and present day present day they are stuck in an elevator together <laughs> Oh, my battery's dying, hold on. So anyway, I, I liked that one the least, I would say, just because I really didn't think that that relationship was healthy. But let me just read to you some of the ways that she describes them. And I was dying. Like, it totally helped me pass the time. I read both of these books back to back on the airplane. Had me cackling because of the ways that she described these giant men, because that's her shtick, it's fine. I'm not making fun of her for it, but... So Liam, when we first meet Liam, he opens the door and she's taken him in because he's really attractive. But when she's trying to talk about how like, he's got broad shoulders, blah, blah, blah. He had arms stretching for miles. <laughs> and then a little bit later, I think he's helping her grab something from like a top shelf and he leans over her so big that he completely blocks the overhead light. <laughs> And I just like picture that as he's just like this mess. <laughs> anyway, so I felt like Under One Roof was a little bit tame when it came to this, but Stuck On You, he is a giant Danish man. He is described as, he's as towering as a Greenlandic mountain range. He has mile long legs, sequoia wide biceps. He was a sentient human McMansion. That one. <laughs> That one, I lost it. He's an urban Sasquatch. He is a giant dome of flesh and muscles. <laughs> he sounds like a monster. He sounds terrifying. An urban Sasquatch? Like, I was just absolutely losing my shit cackling. Um, I had a great time. So did I like the books? I thought Under One Roof was definitely better than Stuck On You. I thought that both of those relationships though were really weird. I think Under One Roof was just that they were both really socially awkward. Stuck On You was just, I feel like that guy was weird as hell, I'm gonna be honest. But yeah, this isn't me hating Allie Hazelwood. Um, just to clear the air, I am not a hater. But um, yeah, so that's what I read. I was howling, cackling, having a really good time. Um, with all three of those romances on the plane, it really helped distract me. Anyway, that's what I read. I'm very excited for what I'm going to be reading in November. I had to put a lot of books, uh, I had a lot of holds come in and I had to kind of put them off because I want to make sure that I was focusing on them. So the ones that I read this month were ones that I was kind of okay to either not read in one go or I knew I was going to eat them up like the thrillers and stuff like that. Um, so these were ones that like I didn't care about very, very, very deeply. Um, but in November I have so many books I can't wait to read and I'm so excited. So anyway, thank you guys for being here. <clears throat> thank you again to Thread Up. There is a link in the description box and you can use my code Carrie to get 30% off of your first order plus free shipping if you are in the US and Canada. And yeah, I hope that you guys are doing well, looking after yourselves, doing whatever you guys need. So anyway, thank you always. Um, and I don't know what content I'm gonna work on next, um, but I will see you then, okay? And I promise now that it's starting to get colder, um, in winter, this is my promise to you, winter, hopefully December of 2022, A Court of Silver Flames, I will do it. Um, I've worked on a little bit of it, but once it starts getting cold and I'm staying inside more, I will throw myself into it and <sighs> you will have your video. <laughs> so, okay. I will catch you guys later. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And links in the description box. Love always. Bye. <laughs>